This is News 3 Now at 5. And thanks for staying with us. The race to schedule a vaccine just got even more competitive now that everyone 16 and up is eligible in Wisconsin. Gabriella Becerra tells us what it's going to take to find an appointment and when that could realistically happen. Gabby? Well, the important thing to remember is that eligibility and availability are two separate things. So although many people are able to start making appointments today, they may not find an opening for several weeks. It feels a little like logging on to snag tickets to a concert or major movie debut. You need to be going out and looking for where they can get vaccinated. And certainly there are a lot of options hopefully out there available as supply increases. For mercy. Fittingly, getting a vaccine will be what gets us back to those kind of events. But now that everyone 16 and older is eligible, it's unlikely a vaccinator will invite you to get your shot. So it's on you to find an appointment online. With some people who get to get vaccinated this week, next week, they're going to be other people who it's going to be several weeks for and that really is a little bit of the luck of the draw. New appointments are typically added once a vaccinator knows how many doses they'll get for that week but appointments are usually taken almost as soon as they're posted. Once they go live on our scheduler and are available to to schedule those appointments they're being filled anywhere between one and four hours. IV, a new vaccinator in the state recommends checking daily to see what is added. Just check during the day um, to see what might be available. And then we do post on our store's Facebook pages when they receive an allocation as well. UW Health Dr. Matt Anderson says it ultimately depends on supply, which still isn't enough to meet demand. But unlike a sold out concert, everyone who wants one will eventually get their tickets punched. You really want to encourage everybody to take advantage of this eligibility opportunity here over the coming months, because that's going to be the way that they can keep themselves safe and keep others safe around them. As of right now, Pfizer is the only vaccine approved for 16 and 17 year olds. Coming up on News 3 Now at 6, we'll, say what doc, we'll share what doctors say parents need to know before they make those appointments for their kids. Gabby, thank you. Today, SSM Health launched a simplified online portal to help people schedule a vaccine appointment. Will depend on the supply of the vaccines. As of today, we do have appointments open this week. And if anyone goes to the website now, they should be able to get an appointment scheduled fairly quickly. The website is open to everyone in the state, even those who do not use SSM as their primary care provider. People who are 16 and 17 years old will need to schedule an appointment by phone to make sure the location they select for the appointment has the appropriate Pfizer vaccinations available. You can find the vaccine scheduling portal at SSMHealth.com. The Boys and Girls Club of Dane County will begin providing COVID-19 vaccinations beginning this weekend at its Sun Prairie location. The Boys and Girls Club will uh, will begin administering the Johnson & Johnson vaccine with the help of Fitchburg Family Pharmacy and the UW Madison School of Pharmacy between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. this Saturday at the McKenzie Family Boys and Girls Club in Sun Prairie. If you're interested, registration is required. Public health officials in Dane County say a recent large COVID-19 outbreak at a child care center is being linked to the so-called UK variant of the virus. Health officials did not identify the child care center, but did say that contact tracing revealed the disease spread quickly among children, parents, and child care center workers. 21 children and workers have tested positive, along with 16 family members of those children or workers. Most of the children infected had mild symptoms. DHS says at least 139 cases of the UK variant of coronavirus has now been found in Wisconsin. Under 1,000 Wisconsin residents have been vaccinated in the past 24 hours. This comes as one-third of Wisconsinites have now received at least one dose of a COVID vaccine. As of today, over 20% or 1.7 or 1.17 million Wisconsinites have completed the vaccine series. And in Dane County, over 25% of residents have completed the vaccine series. As the state opened up vaccine eligibility to everyone 16 and older, today inmates at the Dane County Jail were able to get their first doses of the vaccine as well. Our Jamie Perez joins us live outside the Dane County Jail with how the process went today, Jamie. All right, well, the sheriff told us that he got 100 doses of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine and 85 inmates signed up to get that shot today. Now, he's hopeful that the medical staff here at the jail can continue working with the inmates to get more people on board with getting the vaccine. Now, right now, there are about 500 inmates here, so still a lot of people are left unvaccinated. But this was just day one of the vaccination process for them. Mahoney said he is excited to get this process underway. 
oftentimes these are those in our community who are most in need of health care. And so we're excited today to begin the vaccination process in the Dane County Jail. Mahoney also said that more than 80% of the jail staff have been vaccinated already. And I did get a chance to speak with some of the very first inmates to get vaccinated. So coming up tonight at 6, I'll share their perspective on what this moment meant for them. Jamie, thank you. The Milwaukee Brewers partnering with the Milwaukee Health Department to make sure Wisconsinites are getting the COVID vaccine. Members of the Brewers organization were vaccinated over the weekend, and now they are encouraging everyone to get vaccinated. The campaign called Crush COVID Milwaukee is encouraging everyone 16 and up to receive the vaccine. The Brewers organization says the players and staff receive the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, and that, of course, only requires one dose. The Biden administration is touting increased vaccination numbers in the fight against COVID-19 with more than 3 million doses administered a day. The U.S. hit a vaccination record over the weekend with more than 4 million doses administered in a single day, but less than a quarter of the U.S. population is fully vaccinated. A new CDC study shows just one dose of the Moderna or Pfizer vaccine is 80% effective at preventing infection, but administration health officials say they're not yet considering a one-shot strategy. Although we always continue to keep an open mind, we consider the route that we're on now is the best route. The White House also announced it will soon open three more federally run mass vaccination sites in South Carolina, Colorado and Minnesota. Governor Evers is issuing an executive order to declare a state of emergency due to elevated wildfire risk in the state. Here's a look at the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources map. It shows there is a very high fire danger for the whole state. The order will allow the DNR to help to get help in its wildfire suppression efforts from the National Guard, including sending the Guard's Black Hawk helicopters to areas of the state where aerial efforts are needed. The governor's office says there have already been more than 320 wildfires reported in Wisconsin so far this year, burning more than 1,400 acres of land. So what does the wildfire fire danger look like in our area? Let's get a look at your first warm forecast. Gary's on the weather patio with more. Gary? Well, Eric, it'll remain elevated until we can get some rain here. We do have some rain in the forecast. So that should help improve things. But currently, if we look at the uh, wildfires that are being uh, reported as burning from the USDA, you can see most of those are in Iowa and Minnesota, a few in western Wisconsin. But relative humidities right now are generally around uh, 40 to uh, 30 percent, and that means that the uh, the air is or the uh, the ground is, is pretty dry. But future track precipitation shows that over the next couple of days, we're probably looking at about an inch to an inch and a half of rain, maybe even a little bit more from Madison South southward, a little bit less to the north, but it should be a good soaking rain. So that's good news there. Visible cloud track shows that we've had some clouds over southern Wisconsin, but those clouds started to break up this afternoon. And as soon as that happened, temperatures really took off. You can see on Doppler track, almost no rain now across the state. A couple of thunderstorms out over Lake Michigan. Low temperatures this morning started out in the 50s. Here in Madison, we only dropped to 58 and we're at 74 degrees. Last hour, we we're at 75. And you can see up to the north where they've had sunshine all day, temperatures are in the low 80s up by Camp Douglas and Black River Falls. So by tomorrow morning, we'll drop only to around 58 degrees. That would tie a record for the warmest low temperature for the date. Tomorrow's high of 74 expected. Could see a chance for a shower or thunderstorm late tonight into early tomorrow morning. And then again, more likely later tomorrow night into Wednesday. I'll have more details in weather in just a few minutes. All right, Gary, thank you. A homicide investigation is underway after a man died from his injuries following a shooting at a Madison gas station. Police say a 23-year-old Madison man who was shot outside the BP gas station on South Park Street Saturday night died from his injuries this morning. They are not releasing his name yet, but police say the victim was targeted. The investigation into the shooting is active and ongoing. Officers say 10 people have now been shot in the city so far this year, but this is the first shooting to lead to a death in 2021. And the Dane County Medical Examiner's Office has identified the man who died after being hit by a car on East Washington Avenue Saturday night. Officers say that 37-year-old Ashley Taylor was hit by a car heading east just past a Stoughton Road intersection near High V around 9.45 Saturday night. Taylor was pronounced dead at the scene. That death remains under investigation by the Madison Police Department. The Minneapolis chief of police and an ER doctor took the stand today in day six of the Derek Chauvin murder trial. The police chief who fired Chauvin the day after he put his knee on George Floyd's neck took the stand. Chief Madera 
Sarah Arredondo described Minneapolis police officer training and policies, including what it means to de-escalate a situation. Jurors also heard from the emergency room doctor who treated Floyd and pronounced him dead. Did you ever observe at any point in time uh, that his heart was beating on its own? Not to a degree sufficient to sustain life. Chauvin's defense countered that oxygen deficiency could be the result of ingesting the opioid fentanyl, which was found in Floyd's body. Last week, paramedics who arrived at the scene of Floyd's arrest testified they could not find a pulse. UW officials are working to find out what caused a piece of concrete slab to fall from the third floor deck at Van Heys Hall. Officials say it happened about one yesterday afternoon. Right now, the area is blocked off with barricades as they investigate. The building is open, but the Linden Street entrance is closed. Officials say no one was hurt. And as you make your way home this evening, just a reminder for drivers that the westbound Beltline ramp to Todd Drive will be closed at 6.30 tonight until April 26th. It's part of the construction project on the Beltline that will be completed in December. It's for improving the inside median shoulders that will be used as an additional travel lane during rush hour. The flex lane is scheduled to open in late 2021 or 22. More to come on News Now at 5 up next. Tomorrow is the spring election. We'll tell you what you need to know before you head out to the polls tomorrow. And coming up tonight at 6, we'll introduce you to the newest member of the Badger football coaching staff. A name you might remember from some of the great teams of the late 90s. That's at 6. And a check of the numbers on Wall Street to start the week. The Dow soaring some 374 points. The Nasdaq up 225 and a half. The S&P jumps 58. We'll be right back. fleet of service vehicles are nearby and our mobile fabrication shops allow us to save you time and money. When your home comfort system needs servicing or replacing, turn to the experts at Carrier and General Heating and Air Conditioning. Wisconsin is a home of workers. We know what needs to get done and we do it. Yet, we've been hit hard. Some harder than others. Our contact may be limited, but we still can lift each other up. Your local Wisconsin energy and emergency rental assistance providers are working together to keep you safely in your home. You may not ask for it, but we want you to know we're here to help. The new windows look great. Two for one windows at Feldco really helped transform the house and saved us money. I'm okay, I'm okay. I wanted a new TV. Right now, get two-for-one windows at Feldco. Plus, no interest until 2022. What you do with the savings is up to you. Two-for-one windows end soon. Call now. For quality windows, siding, and doors, call 866 for feldco I want to have a million dollars when I retire. Oh, great goal. So where do I start? Well, first you set up automatic transfers into savings. That can add up pretty quickly. For me, working on putting $1,000 into an emergency fund got me in a good saving habit. Already on it. Then put together a plan to get rid of debt and maximize your investments. You know, Summit helped me do it. Oh, that's great. I love how Summit gives people the knowledge and confidence to go after their goals. It's your money. Own it. Summit Credit Union. Kids learn from our example. So what would they learn from Deb Kerr? Kerr covered up a school financial scandal. Her employee overdrew the school's account by half a million dollars. Instead of firing him, she paid him on leave for a year, then lied to get him another job, saying, quote, he's a good steward of public funds. Honesty and integrity are important for our schools. Vote to show our kids a good example. General Heating and Air Conditioning. Our large fleet of service vehicles are nearby, and our mobile fabrication shops allow us to save you time and money. When your home comfort system needs servicing or replacing, turn to the experts at Carrier and General Heating and Air Conditioning. On the next News 3 Now this morning, Josh Ryder is in the 608 at a local CrossFit gym. And Chris Reese has a look at how spending more time outside could improve your health. That's in this week's Time for Kids, Tuesday on News 3 Now this morning. My jaw is shattered here to here. They said it was just like dust and then broken here. A beating 
leads to a massive medical debt and the victim left holding the bill. With trials on hold during the pandemic, court cases are stuck in limbo. I'm just looking to put this behind, be done with it. News 3 Now investigative reporter Naomi Cole shows you how the waiting is cutting into victims' bank accounts and credit scores. Justice delayed tonight on News 3 Now at 10. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. It doesn't get quite the same hype as a presidential election, but local leaders hope you make your voices heard via the ballot box. It is election day tomorrow. Our Brady Mallory is here to show you what to expect. Brady? An election clerk we talked with says they're prepared for about a 60% turnout for tomorrow's spring election, which would be incredibly high for this kind of election. Well, it's your chance to decide on the results of several local and statewide races. So far, the Madison City Clerk's Office has issued 34,000 absentee ballots, more than 22,000 people have returned theirs. If you vote in person, though, you will still see a number of COVID safety protocols in place. This is our fifth pandemic election, so I think we have some of the routines down by now. It's taken a lot of effort, and we're very thankful and grateful for all of our thousands of election officials who dedicate their time to make sure that voting resources remain accessible regardless of the global pandemics. Absentee drop boxes closed a few minutes ago. However, Chang asks if you do drop off your absentee ballot, you do so at your polling place tomorrow, so it will be counted. Polls open at 7 tomorrow morning and close at 8 p.m. All right, Brady, thank you. The Henry Viola Zoo is getting a little bigger. Three North American river otters were born on February 15th at the zoo. The three pups were named after rivers in Wisconsin, Lily, Montello, and Fisher. Guests will have to wait until May to see the otter pups. They're currently learning how to swim, and once they're strong enough, they will be able to swim in the otter exhibit. Well, let's get a look at your first warm weather now. Chief Meteorologist Gary Kinalti joining us with your forecast. Gary? Well, Eric, uh, it's going to be very mild over the next couple of days. Temperatures will be in the 70s during the day and in the 50s at night. So look for those high temperatures to remain at least into the uh, 70s through Wednesday. We'll also see some shower and thunderstorm chances uh, beginning tonight and then off and on through Wednesday and possibly into Thursday as well. Toward the end of the week, we'll see the showers continuing through Saturday, but temperatures will turn cooler from Thursday through Saturday. Uh, on Doppler track, there were some showers, even a couple of thunderstorms over Iowa earlier today. Those have just about dissipated. A couple of thunderstorms in northwestern Indiana and out over Lake Michigan. To the northwest, a few showers just starting to develop across parts of uh, central Minnesota. That area will probably see some strong thunderstorm development over the next few hours. Storm Prediction Center has a slight risk of severe thunderstorms up toward the Twin Cities and a marginal risk about as far south as La Crosse. We're not expecting any severe weather here, but those storms to the northwest could bring the potential for some high wind as well as hail uh, the, being the main threats. To Tomorrow, there's a marginal risk of severe thunderstorms over parts of western Iowa as the next weather system starts to develop to the south and west. And Wednesday, that marginal risk moves a little bit closer, but depending on the instability of the atmosphere, it's possible that there could be some stronger thunderstorms here on Wednesday ahead of a cold front. But our temperatures have been very mild, and overall, according to our friends over at uh, Climate Central, our spring temperatures in Madison have been warming. The average temperature from 1970 through 2020, last 50 years, shows an increase of almost Almost two degrees here in Madison as climate change continues to affect our weather here in uh, central and southern Wisconsin. Temperatures, these are current temperatures right now, near 90 degrees in Sioux Falls, Minneapolis at 84 degrees. Temperatures in the 70s, it's actually warmer in the northern part of the state because they've had sunshine all day. Here in southern Wisconsin, we had clouds for much of the afternoon and just got into the sunshine uh, fairly recently, but we're still looking at temperatures that will be well above normal for the next couple of days. The jet stream has pushed to the north and now mild air covers much of the country. This main storm track is also staying to our north and west. So for right now, the better chances for rain are staying up to the north of us. We could use the rain. It's been dry around here. We had that story about wildfires earlier in the newscast, but eventually we'll see our rain chances increase as the jet stream starts to drop southward a little bit over the next few days. There's a cold front to the west, but with that jet stream from west to east, there's really nothing to push the cold air southward. So the back end of this front will become stationary and never quite get here over the next couple of days. The warm front will lift to the north and we're going to stay very 
mild and warm for the next few days before the cold front eventually works its way through here. These are the current temperatures. Again, it's actually a little warmer in the northern part of the state with the exception of Superior. Notice the effect that an easterly wind off of Lake Superior can have. They're only at 42 degrees while inland areas are about 30 to 40 degrees warmer. Climate Prediction Center 6 to 10 day temperature outlook calling for above normal temperatures starting to shift off to the east. Below normal temperatures developing out to the west and our precipitation expected to be above normal. And this is mainly in the uh, the latter part of the uh, 6 to 10 day period for next week. After that though things should dry out and probably warm up across much of the country. Our forecast for tomorrow calls for a high temperature of 74 degrees. Could be a shower or thunderstorm chance late tonight into early tomorrow morning then partly sunny and very mild and we may have to boost that temperature up based on where we are right now. Future track shows those temperatures only dropping into the upper 50s tonight. The best chances for a shower or thunderstorm will be late tonight into early tomorrow morning and not everybody will see them. Then tomorrow we're back into sunshine. Temperatures at least into the middle 70s if not warmer. Tomorrow night some shower and thunderstorm chances but the better chances continue to stay to the north of us. It'll probably be during the day on Wednesday as a cold front starts to approach from the west and a wind shift starts to develop that we probably will see a better chance for a shower or thunderstorm but even then temperatures should still reach the lower 70s. Rainfall amounts, latest computer model forecasts have backed off in the rain from Madison to the south. Heavier amounts might be favored more up toward the La Crosse area but that's mainly just in the short term. Any thunderstorm could bring an inch or two of rain in a short period of time. 7 to 10 day forecast. Notice we do turn cooler for the latter part of the week. 62 on Thursday and around 60 Friday, mid 50s on Saturday with some shower chances. Sunday should be dry and then we'll see some shower th chances into early parts of next week. Maybe a thunderstorm on Monday. It might, might be cold enough with temperatures in the mid 30s to see a few flurries of snow mixing in with the rain at night. Nothing that will stick to the ground. As we check out first warrant traffic, pretty quiet day out on the roads. Of course, we've got the construction ongoing on the Beltline, but right now travel times on the Beltline. Uh, Pretty uh, typical for this time. Of, uh, you can see the speed limits between about 60 and 65 miles an hour either direction on the Beltline. Travel times 15 minutes either direction between University Avenue and the interstate heading out of Madison from the Beltline south through to Janesville. It'll take you 25 minutes on I-3990. US-12 to Sauk City is a 16-minute commute from Middleton and from downtown to Sun Prairie on East Washington Avenue and US-151. It's also a 16-minute commute. That's your news for now for sworn traffic. Gary, thank you. And ahead on News Street Now at 5, the pandemic is delaying many court cases around the state. How it's affecting the victims. That story just ahead. News 3 Now First Warn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Get more enjoyment from your outdoor space with patio enclosures. Right now, get 25% off your sunroom, plus no interest if paid in full in two years. Call today. Patio enclosures. For over 25 years, Fry Construction has provided excellence in home improvements. We strive to exceed the expectations of our clients with each and every project we do. Respected by so many of your neighbors and voted best of Madison, Fry Construction delivers lasting quality for your home. In honor of our 25 years, we're offering 25% off gutters or insulation with any full roof project. Schedule your consultation today at FryConstruction.com. Monona Plumbing and Fire Protection, a name you can trust when service is a must. Monona Plumbing and Fire Protection is here 24 hours a day. Seven days a week for all your residential and commercial plumbing services. From installation, repairs, and maintenance to complete sewer and drain cleaning, we've got you covered. Visit MononaPFP.com. Monona Plumbing and Fire Protection, a name you can trust when service is a must. For those ready to make this the year their dream yard becomes a reality, it's time to roll up your sleeves and head to Blaine's Farm and Fleet, where we have everything you need to build a backyard oasis, like assorted estate fertilizer or weed feed, just $19.99. This Simpson pressure washer with Kohler engine, $80 off. Save $150 on this backyard trampoline. Plus, for those raising chickens, free-range feeders or drinkers or buy one, get one half off. Find value at Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Each year, thousands of wildfires are caused by burning debris. Homes are lost. Lives are changed. Fires that could have been prevented. Not only is it harmful to the environment, burning garbage pollutes the air we all breathe. Protect your community. Avoid burning or consider alternatives. Compost, recycle, or donate used items to someone who can give them a new life. 
instead of it costing your own. Keep it safe. Keep it clean. You expect students to make a mess in schools, but the superintendent, under Deb Kerr's leadership, the Brown Deer School District was a financial mess. Kerr's district's accounts were overdrawn by half a million dollars, slamming her district with late fees. And instead of firing the employee responsible, he was given paid leave, costing taxpayers 136,000 more to pay him to do nothing. Scandals, cover-ups, taxpayer money wasted. Deb Kerr, the wrong choice for state school superintendent. Get more enjoyment from your outdoor space with patio enclosures. Right now, get 25% off your sunroom, plus no interest if paid in full in two years. Call today. Patio enclosures. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. Welcome back. COVID court delays have led to a backlog in criminal cases. But lost in the shuffle, victims whose lives are left on hold. News 3 Now investigates. Naomi Coles is continuing a series on justice delayed tonight. Cases delayed by trial shutdown and other issues are leaving victims paying the price. In the case of Nick Penow in Marquette County, that means a permanently damaged jaw, but also a steadily dropping credit score. It started with a drunken late night fight in 2019 with two people walking away with battery charges and one other with tens of thousands in medical bills. With no insurance and unable to pay, he says he's waiting on a restitution court order that is taking a long time. We're trying to buy a house, you know, I'm trying to build credit and stuff. And with um, more than two years salary up in debt at the hospital there, that's pretty hard to do. Both the defendants have had COVID-related court delays with a jury trial still pending that was originally set for last June. There's more to that story and we'll dive into how restitution is supposed to work and why Nick believes it would still help. That's tonight at 10 o'clock. You can also check online for my past reporting on how a rising backlog in cases because of the pandemic could leave courts set back by months as trials reopen. Reporting for News 3 Investigates, I'm Naomi Coles. And tonight there will be a new men's basketball champion, top seed Gonzaga. What a finish the other night, huh? They'll look to keep that record perfect as they battle Baylor. That game will be right here on CBS. Tip-off schedule for about 8.20. Final check of your first one forecast in just a moment. Stay with us. Garden Center has everything you need to grow and maintain a healthy lawn. Keep your lawn looking great with Forever Green Crabgrass Preventer and Lawn Fertilizer. Formulated to prevent crabgrass and other unwanted weeds from growing. A 32-pound bag is $14.95 after 11% rebate. Keep your lawnmower powered up with a lawn and garden battery. Right now, all batteries are 11% off. Get 11% off everything now at Menards. It used to be that when you were healthy, you didn't have to think about health care. You didn't care which doctors invented which treatment. But now, things are different. Now when you or someone close to you is sick, that's all you care about. A doctor with answers. A medical team you can trust. That treats you like you're important. UW Health. Remarkable medicine. Remarkable care. Erectile dysfunction for men of all ages has become much more common. In fact, most men don't realize that 90% of erectile dysfunction is a direct result of broken down old blood vessels. This causes a lack of blood flow that is critical when achieving an erection. With our state-of-the-art technology, we're able to stimulate new stem cell growth right in our office with no pills, no needles, no surgery, and no pain. To book your consultation and get back to natural functionability, call Peak Performance for Men today. How to change the way you pizza. Step one, grab a delicious Papa Murphy's pizza. Step two, bake. Step three, chow down on the deliciousness. Right now, get a large Fiesta chicken pizza. Papa Murphy's. Patio doors, patio doors. Scott the window guy can do patio doors. Scott the window guy can do patio doors. We do patio doors. That's scottthewindowguy.com. 
heard of Nuts.com? It's the best kept secret of savvy snackers all over the country. Incredible nuts, dried fruits, organic snacks, and gluten-free treats. There's something for everyone to love, including free shipping with your first order. Best pistachios ever. Love the dried peaches. White chocolate toffee cashews are awesome. The holy grail of honey sesame sticks. The quality has made me a customer for life. With so much to love and free shipping with your first order, check out nuts.com. Boy, spring is in full bloom in California. Isn't this beautiful? This is the Carlsbad Flower Fields, just north of San Diego. Guests were able to enjoy the blooming flower gardens as coronavirus restrictions loosen up a little bit. The 50 acres of flowers are in full bloom. Guests can stroll through the picturesque fields as well to visit the poinsettia and orchid displays, and they even offer antique tractor tours around the fields. Oh, would I love to do that. That is so beautiful. Beautiful. Flowers around here might get a little bit of a drink, right, Gary? They should. I, I look at those flowers and I think, oh boy, here come Pollen. my allergies. Yeah, allergies. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> well, right now, there's the view from the WISC TV Sky Cam. Skies have cleared out very nicely and temperatures have jumped up here in uh, the Madison area. Uh, temperatures right now mid 70s around here, but it's actually warmer up to the north by a few degrees where they've had sunshine for much of the day today. Look for a low tonight of 58. That would tie a record for the lowest, war uh, warmest low temperature. High tomorrow, 74. Be a shower thunderstorm chance in there. The better chances will come Wednesday afternoon into Thursday, and then temperatures will cool off for the end of the week and into next week. All right, Gary, thanks. We're back in 30 minutes for News 3 Now at 6. CBS Evening News coming your way next. Stay tuned.